Hi friends! Today we are covering my December favorites, which also means that this will be the last video of 2021. But if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. If you want to see what my virtual class schedule is like, maybe participate in a barefoot body conditioning, well then please sign up for my newsletter down below. This being the last video of 2021 definitely has put me in a tizzy. I did complete my five part best of 2021 series where I highlighted makeup, skincare, brushes, the whole gamut. So if you want to check out that series, I will post the playlist link up above and down below. I thought we will start off with lifestyle and I mentioned how I felt completely in love with deep tea holiday candles in November and you know I bought a few more candles not only deep tea but I also ventured into the candle brand known as Sierra Trudon thanks to Michelle Wong of course for recommending because if you ever want to get your lux up you just go to Michelle Wong okay Sierra Trudon candles are one of the most exquisitely designed candles I have ever encountered felt, smelled, experienced. They're the oldest candle brand. Like I'm talking way back since the 1600s. They have a heavy legacy that is represented in the fact that the glass is hand blown in Tuscany. Italy. The wax is hand poured. Their fragrance profiles are just so nuanced and complex. Me being very sensitive to fragrance as I am, I definitely had to choose what was okay for me to smell and not otherwise my nostrils will explode. Again, the artisanal efforts that are put into making these candles just makes it even more compelling for me, encourages me to dive in deeper. I experienced this with Hude, that is uh, the Japanese word for brush, and the fact that these brushes, as I have expressed before, are handmade, the hairs are hand bundled, the woods used to create the handle, and a lot does go into creating these Sierra Trudon candles, but the scents, fam, the one you just saw is from the limited edition holiday collection. You see the Sierra Trudon label here, the sticker on top. They hand place this metallic foil in a way that just looks so rustic but regal at the same time. Again, the scents for me I like because these in particular are very woodsy. You have the spruce fir, you have more of like a cocoa bayonne, which is actually the one Michelle recommended for me to try. Bayonne is unlike anything I have ever smelled. It's a cocoa but it's not sweet and the inside, look at this copper color of the candle and when it's lit it is absolutely gorgeous i think the scent selection for the holiday collection very much represents a sophisticated holiday feel for sure i will be getting more but they are very expensive so it's not like i could buy you know two for 20 okay the wax melts beautifully smooth and silky and if some gets on the side if you didn't let the burn completely envelop the entire space of the vessel. You could just use your burner to kind of melt from the sides and it just melts so clean. The wick is made out of cotton which ensures a nice long smooth burn. Whoever is using these candles whether to wind down with or to just have a nice smelling space is definitely elevated in a way that I feel very few candles can deliver. Up next in the lifestyle category, I gotta stand up for this one because I got my aloe sherpa coat. Now this, excuse me while I model, I don't buy a lot of stuff from aloe but sometimes they come out with the piece and I'm like you know what I could use that. The sherpa coat is just a big oversized coat. There are no buttons, there are pockets. The fleece lining with the faux sherpa outer shell if you will. I've been wearing this, I've been wearing this coat every day. It's like a sack. It's something that you can just throw on but still be on trend because that's the thing right now. Oversized, minimalist in 
preparation. I rarely see trench coats anymore, even though I feel they are a classic silhouette. The oversized, non-button, just thrown on look, I feel dominates the fashion world, baby. I'm I'm not I haven't been tuned in, fam. So you can let me know down below. It's just super comfortable and easy to throw on what I'm wearing now over a hoodie, over a flannel, over anything. Anything. Now it doesn't close, so I'm one that generates a lot of heat and I like that because rarely do, do I walk around with a coat buttoned or zipped up. I just I just get hot, okay? And I have a, a quick walking pace that definitely bumps up my temperature quickly. I love the black color. It just looks classic even though it's fuzzy. It has definitely more of a cozy feel and look to it than something more tailored. But I've been wearing that thing like crazy. It's definitely found itself on many walks and I'm very happy that I purchased it. Unfortunately, I missed out during Aloe's Black Friday sale. I could have probably gotten $50 off because I felt guilty about wanting it, but I decided to bite the bullet and get it when it was back in stock. And although I didn't take advantage of the savings, I'm very much happy with it. I think I have worn its value, if you will. Why I hesitated was the fact that I'm 5'5", five five and I was afraid that it will make me look like I was playing a dress up because the models that were showcasing the coat online were like 5'8", five 5'9", five and I liked the length, how it looked on them, but I'm like, ooh, is that gonna be too long on me? It's not too long. I think it hits like, not eat like, maybe below my knees, but I didn't think it looked like it was too big for me. So that was what was holding me back from making my purchase during, again, the Black Friday sale, but I'm happy I bought it. It doesn't look too long. If you have to get it tailored, if you're shorter than me, I get it. I'm sure there are other brands out there that make a similar Sherpa light coat that might be shorter, so. And of course, I think I mentioned this already. I forgot in what video, but I love Anime Balls Deep. It's a anime manga commentary channel here on YouTube. They have their own merch line. <laughs> this is the Asta shirt, the Chad, the Chad of Black Clover. I love the Supreme design or the Supreme inspired design. It comes in different colors. I have small and medium. I like how the medium fits is very baggy. It has a very, again, very comfy feel about it. And when I wear my aloe Sherpa coat, it is such a good combination. Of course, they wouldn't have Tanjiro on there because I think his name is too long for like the Supreme feel across the face. I have the Deku one. I have Asta. I believe there's another character they have and they have a uh, Naruto merch as well. So I will leave the link down below so you could check it out. But I love that hoodie. I feel so cool like an anime nerd. Hmm. Speaking of, <laughs> they bought me a few statues. Can you even with this Inosuke statue? I squealed when I saw this. This was a Christmas present from Bay, and I just fell in love. I actually saw him at Anime NYC and I thought he was so adorable. I also have this Inosuke statue, which is a little more dynamic. I like this one too with his two swords. It's like, Pshum! you have the boar head attachment and then you have our pretty Inosuke head attachment that we all simp for. And then I have the goat. Rengoku Kyojiro, look at him. He's so handsome. Not only do I have this guy here, but I also have, you're gonna die, a mini one. Look how cute he is. Are you dead? I love my Rengoku statues. I feel protected. I just feel like, feel like a nerd, a good nerd. And I showed you Deku in my last video, so he's hanging out with his friends here at my desk, you know? I'm definitely, there's a vibe going on here, very strong vibe, headstrong, okay? Now into beauty, if you're like, thank God, because these expensive candles and these anime statues, what are you talking about? With the Wayne Goss holiday brush, without a doubt, I know it's limited, it sold out, I especially love this with powder foundation. I love it with liquid foundation too. I would apply the liquid foundation first on my face and then go in with the brush so I don't get so much product. Or if you were to press the foundation on the brush, there'll be a lot of product in the brush. I wanna keep it more on the surface, but all that to say, very smooth. One of the smoothest Psycho Ho Kabuki-like brush 
brushes, excuse me, that I've ever used compared to the other foundation brushes that I have in my collection. It's so smoothing and silky on the skin, but as I mentioned before, I especially love this with powder foundation because for the powder to actually look skin-like in finish, I think a buffing type brush is essential. And the fact that this is just packed full of bristles and beyond soft is again vital for that blend so i've been using the heck out of that again i know it's limited but man i'm grateful that beautylish sent it to me i've been using it non-stop and it has quickly become one of my favorite foundation brushes not for just this month but of all time allies of skin vitamin c serum now i had ordered or Beautylish was very nice to send me upon my request for their gift card event, the Mandelic Serum, the, well, excuse me, Mandelic Pigmentation Corrector Night Serum. I've been using this for maybe two and a half months now. I mentioned that the Tamanu oil has a, an herbaceous scent to it, and I smelled it when using this for the first time, but I became used to it. And this prompted me to try their Vitamin C Serum. I recently just finished the Youth to the People Vitamin C Serum. This is 35%. I believe they use the THD Tetrahexyl Dexyl and Ethyl something ascorbate blend. This has more of a dry oil feel. So when you squeeze it out, this is how it looks like. If you think that's going to be too oily, again, you have to just work it into your skin. It's the first waterless 35% I believe solution out there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you can read that in the product description on the Beautylish page. I absolutely adore this serum. I've been using it every day. I love how it leaves my skin with that glow, but it doesn't feel oily and it doesn't look overly shiny. And it's just nice to spend a little bit of time of massaging your face in the morning to ensure that the product actually absorbs and it doesn't smell, like it doesn't have that classic skin scootical smell. The alexcorbic acid scent is a little too much for me. I don't smell this on me at all. Now initially when you do put it on you can detect that vitamin C scent but it disappears on me and I put this all over so let me know down below if you have used this if you have experienced otherwise but for me it's been a hit and I think despite my own picking that are all my own fault I think between the vitamin C the Mandelic Pigmentation Corrector, and my Tretinoin, my skin texture's been looking pretty good, right family? I think with the uh, discolorations, they're fading a little faster, and my skin texture, again, overall has been looking and feeling really good. Mooncat, oh my goodness. Mooncat, formerly known as Live Love Polish, rebranded a few months ago, and these polish bottles, <laughs> excuse me, are one of the most beautifully designed polish bottles I have ever seen. I just am head over heels for their logo. You have the crescent moon with the cat eye in the center. This is in Illusionist, which is a magnetic polish, and the black one you saw was Emo for Life. Great black nail polish. In addition to Cirque Colors Memento Nori, you be set. Millennia is another magnetic nail polish, and I don't have these on now, but I do have them on previous videos. Extraordinary. It's like the freaking galaxy is on your nail. And I like to place my nail on the actual magnetic tool while painting and while applying the top coat to ensure a stronger shift on the nail bed. And I also apply Emo for Life as a base so the color can appear bolder and more impactful when you're done. And Congratulations for the rebrand. I think it has been doing phenomenally well. I think they also introduced new shades to their collection. The ones that I just showed, I think were pre-existing. And as of recent, Mooncat has added uh, new collections again to the brand, but definitely check it out. Just beautifully designed bottles. I love the logo. The entire feel and vibe of the brand is just right up my alley. Visual Etoile. This has been a crowd favorite from Viseart. Again, the Petite Pro format, I think just so accessible and great, but they really committed to this smoky story with the grays, the navy, and the purple, the two metallics here. Well, three, this is the lighter pink champagne tone metallic, but I just adore these shades and you 
truly get that really smoky, just party, even dare I say New Year's eye, definitely appropriate for now, you know, even if you're spending it by yourself, just put a nice New Year's eye on take a picture because people have said before and I agree that the petite pro series overall leans very neutral very warm very safe right they really embodied I think like that Paris night mood and feel with their color story and people who are all about those shades I think can enjoy finally the Vizier eyeshadow formula which is just unparalleled especially when it comes to their matte smooth to the blend blurred on the edges the metallics are soft they're shiny they don't feel heavy on the lids and they're just again very easy to apply so I have to give it up to the Etoile palette because I really do think they embodied again that Paris Starry Night feel that you can definitely now get on your lids. Auric, well, this is not a new favorite, but I recently bought the Sunstone shade that was, I believe, introduced sometime a few months ago to the Glow Lust Radiant Luminizer line. Sunstone is definitely my shade that I use under foundations, that I can mix with slightly lighter foundations, because between Pyrite and Citrine, Citrine is definitely like my summer glow shade. Pyrite I can use on the cheekbones and maybe mix with a slightly warmer foundation like the Lisa Eldridge. Sunstone is dead on the shade that I can use by itself, that I can mix with my moisturizer. Again, that I can use with any foundation, no matter where I find it on the color spectrum. And I've just, again, gone on and on about the texture of this formula, how it just looks so radiant and blurred and soft focused on the skin without looking artificially shimmery. Just, you know that look. It's like, ooh, it's a little too shiny. Did you use baby oil? Not at all with this. I have been using the Glow Lust nonstop again with several of my different foundations that I have on my collection and it definitely elevates the finish. It gives it a little more something. It gives a little more glow, a little more radiance. So I will continue using that until it's done. Until something else comes along, it's, it's essential. I will be using that every day. Rare Beauty. Now, while I'm aware that it is December 30th, and I bought this December 28th, 27th. I still have to include it, I'm sorry. Blown away by their Warm Wishes Effortless Bronzer Stick and blown, blown away by their Soft Pinch Liquid Blush. Yesterday, I bought two more shades. In my most recent video, I will again link that up above and down below, I went over Hope and joy these two here love these shades pink and more coral peach and now i picked up love and believe believe is the mauve love is the more terracotta i applied believe here on the higher parts of my cheekbones and then pulled in a little bit of hope on the apples of the cheeks outstanding formula i mean these have really just blown it out of the park with a lot of makeup wearers i think it's easy to apply no matter whether it's the dewy or the matte finish it's smooth whether you want to use fingers a brush or a sponge the color richness is there you get amazing pigmentation that is easy to blend easy to deal with and the bronzer stick i i, I mean the fact that this is so beautifully silky smooth and easy to blend i will say though there are only five shades i wish they went one more shade deeper because the say sun melt bronzer another favorite that i tried not only last month but i've been using this month also they have that beautifully deep rich brown shade that for rare beauty being released when it did it's like couldn't have gone a little deeper than the five, but it's okay. It's really a shame because I, I do feel everyone on the skin tone spectrum should experience this Warm Wishes bronzer stick. It's one of the best bronzer sticks I have ever tried. Not only in stick form, but in compact form. It's, it's outstanding, what can I say? And the Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes, I think I'm stopping at four. Definitely. I ended up picking up the Optimus setting powder. It does have a little bit of mica in it. It has a little bit of shine. Not shine. There, you can see the sparkles, but it's not as evident 
when you buff it into your face as it is when you swatch it on your your hand i just wanted to mention that because i did say in that video if i pick this up i will let you guys know so i want to use that more extensively before i present an opinion on it but the bronzer stick and the liquid blushes are a must. I don't know if you noticed, but I have Biba something on my eyes. On one eye, I have the middle row from the big Biba. And on the other eye, I have the mini Biba. Can you tell which is which? I'll give you a little bit of time. Let me come in closer so you can see. I learned from one of you, thank you for posting this in the comments, that mini Biba served as an extension to the original Biba. If there was an extra row in the big biba mini biba would be it now to reveal the answer this is from big biba and this is from mini i think you can probably detect that the pasha shade which is the deepest one in the middle row is giving me that depth but there's even more smoke from the bruno shade in mini biba i I, I do love this palette, I do. I have not heard the general consensus about uh, how people feel about Mini Biba. I just love these shades. I love me some rosy neutrals that are on the warmer coral side. I think it gives the eyes a little more character, especially if you're right on the medium tan. I, I really love those tones on my on my skin complexion because again, it, it gives you warmth without it being terracotta, without it being orange brown. It's another type of hue that is still soft that you can just forego this shade and go with more of the brown coral rose shades in Mini Biba. I think it's really easy to use. You can just use the cream to powder shade here one of my absolute favorites. This is so easy to just slap on the entire lid and crease and be done. And the reason why I did this was just to show if, if you really wanted to split hairs, you can say this color is a little smokier, this color got a little bit on the tone, blah, blah, blah. Overall, they give you, they give you the same vibe. So if you have the big Biba, you don't necessarily need the mini one. So I'm saying, and I'm sure you have other palettes, maybe other eyeshadow singles that replicate what's in Mini Biba and you can create this, right? But if you were eyeing the middle shade in the Big Biba, but you could not commit to it, it's like, that's a lot of product for one person. Then you have the Mini Biba to then fulfill your coral brown rose needs. That is the, the silver lining in all of this, despite the similarities. We got choices, okay? Now, the Rose Cheek Duo. I adore the highlighter. I also really like the cream blush. I do not think it's universal, as the description says. It's not a universal color, cause, uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of skin tones on the spectrum, Natasha. But I do like how it looks on my skin. It definitely gives me a nice flush of color. It it livens up my complexion, it gives it flush, it's that perfect pink that does not look ashy on me, which I do like. So if you are deeper than me, I have said this in my original video, let me know down below if you tried the mini rose cheek duo. The portability of these products just, I have to mention it, for me plays a huge role in me deciding if something is a favorite or not because if it could weave itself into how you know going to Bay's house or Maddie's house and having to pack something that's not going to take up space but the products are impactful they deliver in performance and in in looks and all that and that's what I recognize in the mini Biba and Rose Cheek Duo I do recommend the products again if you're in the market for smaller palettes you think the colors are going to work out for you then go right ahead and I think that's it fam <sighs> well, signing off on another year. And I wanted to end the video by presenting something that was gifted to me and what basically embodies how, well, you know, I think our relationship, uh, what you have done for me throughout the entire year and previous years that I've been here on YouTube. This is from a family member who is a jewelry maker. And Maya decided to apply her jewelry skills and make me my own journal with my logo. Not only that, can you see the unicorn skin effect? And on the back, 
You have all my fun sayings. You have Pat McGraw, Natasha Denona. Hi, friends. Made in Italy. All my favorite brands, my favorite palette, Midnight Suns etched in here. Sonya G. I just think it is so thoughtful. You have all things movement and beauty here. You have a crown and you have like unicorn skin. Like this is holographic paper lining. When I opened this, I was I was in tears. I was in tears. I haven't used it yet. I think I want to start the new year by uh, writing on a fresh page, and I definitely want to use this as my my grateful journal. Right, interactions that I have online in real life, things that really belong in this journal to help me stay grounded, to help me remember that. Whatever negative something I encounter, there are still people like Maya that are just so thoughtful and generous. And all of you, I think uh, I'll probably write comments that I'll see under my videos that really touch me and I'll put them in here. So thank you so much to not only Maya, but any of you who watch my videos, who leave comments, who really just carve out a part of your day to spend time with me. And I thank you also for being so nice to everyone and just, definitely embodying what a community is supposed to be like so i can't thank you enough everyone for everything you have done for me over the course of the year for your patience for your understanding i cannot wait until we begin 2022 together i don't know it's going to be the first video if you have any ideas let me know all that to say thank you all so much for everything please have an amazing rest tail end of your new year i love you all please again have a happy and safe new year's eve and i will see you on the next one